Now, whether it's the sound, the soothing sound of mm -hmm. the waves, or maybe the sand between your toes, I can see, look at your... You're, just, you're there already, you, aren't you? If you just mentioned seaside, I feel just much better about life. A trip can, can sort of yeah. lift your spirits. Well, now researchers are investigating whether so-called blue health could be used to help people living with things like anxiety, depression and suffering with loneliness, even if they can't get to the coast. So how would they do it? Breakfast Graham Satchel is looking in, into it for us this morning. He's in Cornwall. Um, he's in Falmouth. And it looks like a really calm day there. Um, Graham, good morning to you. How are you feeling? Morning, Louise. I am feeling extraordinarily relaxed in this ridiculously oversized breakfast deck chair that we've got here in Falmouth this morning on the Cornish coast. The estuary here, a little grey this morning, but for me it is one of the most beautiful spots in the whole country. You might be able to see we've got our aerial pictures up this morning and it is really a stunning view. Mental health experts have long known that visits to the coast can lift the spirits and they have been become much more interested in so-called blue health, what it is about the, this coastline, the sea, that can help people suffering with anxiety, uh, depression and loneliness. And we've been looking at one project which is looking to use virtual reality technology to harness the therapeutic power of the sea to bring it to people who can't get here themselves. OK, Suze? Happy? We're off the coast of Falmouth on a boat owned by the charity Sea Sanctuary. On board, a skipper, a therapist and two people, Susie and Ian, who are living with anxiety and depression. There's something very special about being on the water. It's such a calming place. You can leave whatever troubles you've got behind and you can escape. There are group sessions on board and everyone works as part of the crew, but the charity says the sea itself has a therapeutic quality. There's something going on, it's quite hard to define, um, but it's, it's, it's something to do with space, something to do with challenge, power. Ian started feeling depressed and withdrawn after retiring from the fire service. There is something eternal about the sea, isn't there, about water? I'm so lucky to be living in Cornwall, to have a pension and to be able to do this, you know. So, what about people who don't live near the coast? A team of researchers from the University of Exeter, a 360 virtual reality camera and a drone. They're trying to capture the power of the coast for people who can't get there themselves. There's quite a lot of evidence now to suggest that accessing and having exposure to natural spaces can be really beneficial for psychological well-being in terms of stress reduction, in terms of um, combating depression. But particularly trying to bring um, that therapeutic blue space in for people who can't access it themselves. So particularly in our, in our project, it's for people who are living in care homes who can't perhaps get outside so easily. Nikki's project is part of much larger European research into so-called blue health. Will it work? Bring it over your glasses. OK, I'm going to pop the earphones down. It's on my nose, that's brilliant, yeah? Yeah, I feel like... I'm Nikki is trying out her videos on a group of volunteers. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. Some of the pictures are calm and relaxing. One could definitely fall asleep. Others more interactive, stimulating. Oh, the turtle's coming behind me. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I thought it was a really interesting experience. It's not something I've done before. It feels like you're there. We, oui, we, oui, where did you come from? Anything, I think, connected with the sea or rivers, water, it certainly takes away some of the day-to-day -day drudgery of life. What we wanted to do was test whether these environments really were relaxing and stimulating and today we found that actually the way that people reacted to them was the way that we hoped that they would and so we're definitely going to be taking those videos forward now into our care homes project. Nikki will take her headsets into care homes next year to bring blue health to those who can't access it themselves. Well, it was amazing seeing those people with those headsets on, and I tried it myself, and really incredible how quickly you immerse yourself in that blue environment. Nikki will take those into care homes next year. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. With me this morning is Joe Sabian from the Sea Sanctuary charity that we saw at the beginning of the piece. And, and um, Joe, you take people out 
on the, now they're four day sales aren't they is that right that's great yeah it's four four days uh, in total starting ordinarily on a monday um, and finishing up on a thursday afternoon so it's not really just being out on the water. There's a whole thing going on here, isn't there, about being part of a crew and being a valued member and being part of a team? Yeah, the, the, some of it, of course, is the sailing and, and the sort of the, the attraction of sailing, being, um, being at one with the sea and on a sailboat. But a lot of it is around the education. A lot of it is the fact that we, as therapists, would say it's a therapeutic alliance. It's the relationship that develops over the four days. Um, and it encourages people to open up and to explore areas that perhaps they haven't for, for, for many years. Do you think that the sea in and of itself has a therapeutic quality? Absolutely. I mean, if you think back of all the, uh, the sort of poems that have been written, the films, and the fact that most people will stand and just stare at the sea without question and, and often without understanding why, there is real magic. I don't think we can ever fully understand it. We know that there are negative ions. We know that um, part of it's really exciting. Um, but a lot of it remains a mystery, and I think that's, uh, that's some of the allure to, to the programme as well. Uh, and uh, we saw in the piece there um, people here at, at Exeter University trying to capture that power in a virtual reality way. Do you think that'll work? Because that's another step removed, isn't it? What do you think about that? Uh, I, I can see the benefit for people who can't, who can't get to the sea, yeah. but I think we're missing, or they are missing, a lot of the vital um, ingredients. And I think there's a formula. I think the sensory awareness, I think feeling, feeling the motion, the smell of the sea, um, and being at one with nature, I think the sort of marine environment, is incredibly powerful. So I don't think it will capture it, but it's some, some start. Yeah. Joe, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. There you are, Blue Health uh, and its future here on a windy, starting to rain kind of Falmouth, but still beautiful and calming as we sit in this massive breakfast deck chair. With that from Falmouth, it's back to you. Oh, do you know, and we'll look at those pictures as we talk to you, um, Graham, and it doesn't matter for me what kind of day it is, but any day by the seaside is a good day, so enjoy it.